My name is Beth Maitland and I'm telling my quilt story at Maine Quilts 2018 in Augusta, Maine on Thursday, July 26th, 2018. And this is the journey of a quilt. In 1993, the state of Maine was going to close the Fort Edgecombe State Park. My husband, Fred Maitland, founded the Friends of Fort Edgecombe that year. And the primary purpose of the Friends Group was to aid the state in the preservation of Fort Edgecombe and to educate the public on life in the early 1800s. The fort was built in 1806 to protect the Wiscasset Harbor from British attack. Although the fort never saw any action during the War of 1812, a British barge navigated the Sheepskit River to discover the fort. The British retreated, ransack, ransacking a redoubt on the southern end of Westport Island, throwing several cannon into the river. That day, there was only a handful of men at the fort, but the next day, there were several hundred men. The townsfolk came to help. The Friends Group portrays those townsfolk in our living history encampments that are held several weekends each summer at the fort. The blockhouse, the oldest wooden octagonal blockhouse remaining in the United States, was in need of new shingles and the purpose of the Friends Group was to raise money to aid the state in reshingling the fort. So the Friends Group decided that we would make a quilt and raffle it. Well, I designed the quilt, it was accepted by the Friends Group, and then my husband had to go to the hospital for bypass surgery. After having cardiac bypass surgery, he was on the mend, so it was time to start the quilt. But I couldn't find the pattern that I had filed carefully away, so I had to design a new quilt pattern. So in April, we decided on this quilt pattern. In June, we were selling tickets for the quilt. And the raffle tickets were sold at the encampments, at local stores, at organizations, People from around the world came and saw Whoa. Remember I, I put my hand up at two minutes thirty seconds. You're kidding. Okay. Oh Just dear. Start back with that sentence and, and know you've got about thirty seconds. Oh dear. It's okay. I cannot do this in thirty seconds. So okay. can we start again? No, just Start where you need to, where you were just before, and finish it as much time as you need, okay? All right. Okay. And you can cut out what you don't want. Well, I can't really do that, but go for it for just to finish the story. That's great. Because there's quite a bit of story. You see, tickets were sold at the encampments and local stores. In September, I decided to enter quilts at the uh, Cumberland County Fair. When they heard about this quilt, my husband had to go and pick it up where it had been on display and was entered at the show. It won a blue ribbon, was hung next to best of show, but when we went to pick up the quilt on the Sunday, all my other quilts were there, but this one was missing. It had been stolen from the fair. One of the volunteers had given it to a woman just before I went there to pick it up. So here we are in colonial garb, ready to take the quilt to another member to sell tickets. The raffle is going to be drawn in three days. What do we do? I consulted two lawyers. One lawyer said that we had to return all the money, which meant making out an awful lot of one dollar checks and mailing them. The other lawyer said hold the raffle and hope that the person who wins it understands. Now if it had been one of the people from a foreign country who had been to the fort, saw the quilt, knew it existed, and then I tell them we don't have it. 
what do we do? We held the raffle. The very next morning, this gentleman called me from Fred's uh, Shrine Club. And he said, I just heard about the lost quilt. I want you to know that the money that we uh, used to buy the tickets can be a donation to the Friends of Fort Edgecombe. And I said, thank you very much, Mr. Gens. You are the person who won the quilt. In the meantime, the middle of October at a Shrine Club meeting, because Fred and David were both Shrine Club members, I gave him a picture of the quilt. And I didn't hear from him until November. In November, I got a phone call from him saying, the night that you gave me the journey, the story of the journey of a quilt, I had congestive heart failure. I had bypass surgery. And after reading about the journey of the quilt, where it explained that Fred had had bypass surgery, he called to talk to Fred about what he experienced. Now, I firmly believe the quilt went missing because of this reason. Because why the very next day did the police contact me and ask to come over? After 140 hours and more of searching for the quilt, the policeman brought the quilt to me. We delivered it to the gentleman that afternoon. In the meantime, or in the years since, his wife passed. And in 2010, he passed. I told one of his daughters and his son that we had the quilt. And subsequently, it went into the estate, and we were able to purchase the quilt from the estate. Because we felt that with the provenance of being a Maine-made quilt, Fort Edgecombe being in Maine, that it should stay in Maine and not go to Colorado, Wisconsin, or North Carolina, where his children lived. So I now have the quilt. And that's the abbreviated story. <laughs>